Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Got a huge update on this next weather pattern all the way into next week as well. We got a train of storms that is coming. We also have chances for tornadoes today, even a few strong tornadoes, damaging winds and hail. Now, this is going to persist with some major snow, but as we go into next week, we got another one coming, bringing even more snowfall and more severe weather. Matter of fact, it's going to bring a lot of rainfall with all this tropical moisture coming and still got formation possible in the Caribbean. This is going to bring some flooding to a lot of places that do need this rainfall. I'm talking about for the south. You're going to get a lot of rainfall all the way from the south all the way to the north. Now, there's a lot of information I want to show you, and I do not want to leave any of it on the editing floor, so I'm going to be as quick as I can, but as clear as I can. Please help me share this video. Hit the like button down below if you've never been here before. Make sure you subscribe. Timestamps are down below in the description as well. Now, you can see we still have our strong thunderstorms for today. Even a good chance for some strong tornadoes before these discrete cells becomes one with the linear system becomes a QLCS becomes a quasi linear convective system where you can still get QLCS tornadoes out of this as it goes through the evening and you will have it for tomorrow as well showing not only for the snow that is going to come down we still have storms over here for Washington and Oregon that is coming through while we're getting these storms build up in the north central but once we get later on still showing we have chances for strong tornadoes as we go through eastern Kansas portions of Oklahoma and through Missouri before it becomes that QLCS of damage and winds and still a chance for a tornado or two down here in Oklahoma. But you also see it's bringing the snowfall for the higher elevations in the northwest and it's still bringing that snowfall as we go until tomorrow morning from Minnesota through Wisconsin and the UP showing a heavy amount of snow coming and I like to add that GFS showed this and Ural didn't show that possible but you can see it really starts around four o'clock in the evening you start getting some very strong discrete supercells that passes by as it goes through Kansas now these have a good chance to form up a chance for a tornado see them before it gets in line with the rest of the QLCS before you get the quasi-linear convective system all the way through with the damage and winds. But as you go through the evening, you still have a chance in this line, a QLCS tornado that could pop up, but you still get that second system that's coming through that, that short wave trough, bringing that snowfall, bringing you some storms as well. And that's gonna help bring some damage and winds towards the Great Lakes as that passes by as you go overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. So you still got some winds that's still going to be coming with this line. It's not going to be as strong, but you still got some nice strong damage and winds coming through all the way from today and tomorrow. But you can also see that you do have that triple point. So as you're going through, you still got your upper level low trying to get a surface low right here. You have your cold front coming through. You have your warm front pulling up with all your moisture and then you have your dry line pushing through right here on the west and all that together look at all these winds that bring up as you're going through eastern kansas through northwestern missouri as you go through the evening see how the winds pick up right there for eastern kansas and as you're going through northern missouri and a little bit of oklahoma before it becomes too late and then it's just a damage and wind event as you get in this system bringing that snowfall and the storms overnight and for tomorrow morning as well we can also see on your significant tornado primers it factors in all these dew points wind shear everything that could form a tornado that you get a best chance as you're going through the evening for eastern kansas northern oklahoma as it goes a little bit through northwestern missouri and later through the night as you're going from eight to nine o'clock potentially getting more with this front through oklahoma maybe even later showing all in all is bringing a nice big patch of hail all this is hail coming with this line of storms just going to the east. Also bringing some damage and winds. It's bringing the 40s, but it's got a big patch of 50s, even the high 50s and chances for 60s. Then as you get that other system forming up, bringing you that snowfall and those storms going to the east as you're going through for tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening, bringing you a 40 miles per hour wind gust, maybe even up to 50 in some areas. And it's bringing a good swath of heavy rainfall that to well-needed areas. Matter of fact, we need more 
coming and we do have more coming we have more coming next week as we get the rest of this tropical system tropical moisture whatever forms up coming in our direction you can see it over here for the northwest as well a lot of good rainfall coming down with this system not so much to the east y'all need it over here as well not so much on this now you see i did post this in my community tab yesterday we did get up upgraded to the enhanced section this is going to be chances for winds and strong tornadoes so so far on your damage and winds here's your cities and states at risk for the strongest winds being in the red section you also have chances for hail for today especially right where all that line forms up with all those strong upper level winds so here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for today but your tornado threat showing the chances for ef2 or stronger tornadoes maybe even a couple of them could be possible so you do have your two percent you have the five percent the ten percent and the ten percent is right where you have your chance for your strong tornadoes right where it meets that triple point National Weather Service has strong, severe thunderstorms capable of producing large hail, damaging wind gusts, and a few tornadoes are expected today into early tonight, particularly from the middle Missouri Valley area into the southern plains. And you do see there's going to be some discrete cells that do pass by before it becomes embedded with the QLCS and the Boeing segments. Now, as this band of storms approaches the Mississippi Valley region by sunset, accompanied by mainly damaging gusts and perhaps an isolated tornado threat. But further south into central Kansas and northern Oklahoma, this is where more discrete thunderstorm development is expected by early evening, showing that the overall strength of the shear could bring at least a few tornadoes, everyone. And a strong tornado or two may happen mainly after dark. The severe threat may transition to more of a damage and gust after that when it creates that squall line, but you can't rule out QLCS tornadoes. So now as this goes for tomorrow, as it goes overnight into the morning, you don't have the chances for the hail, but you still got the chances for the wind. You have the 5%. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for that. You also have a small chance for tornadoes for tomorrow. So here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for tomorrow as well. Plus Friday, we have a 5% chance for severe weather as well from that second system that's going to be moving in. So here's your cities and states at risk for the severe weather for Friday. And remember, this is going to be for chances for damage and winds and hail. But as this comes in and brings some for Friday, it's also going to bring some more for Saturday and for Sunday as it comes further in. Maybe even a Monday getting in there from that next storm system while we're dealing with what's coming in the Caribbean, maybe into the Gulf. So here you are for Saturday, same area almost. You have a 15% chance for severe weather. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. And for Sunday, as it starts to grow, you got a 15% risk for severe weather already a day five. So here's your cities and states at risk for the severe weather coming for Sunday. Plus what's coming around the corner because we do have a marginal for flash flooding for today. Also for tomorrow, we have a marginal for flash flooding. But once we go through Friday, then Saturday, then we're going to get that next storm system. You already got a slight risk for flash flooding. This is for Saturday. And as you go through Sunday, it's there again. So there is more flooding coming. There is more rain coming towards the south. Way more than this. Showing by the time we go through the weekend, bringing a good bit of rainfall for the northwest. Also over here for the Great Lakes, all the way down towards the south. But once we get what's going on in the tropics, whether it's formation or not, it is going to bring some good beneficial rainfall. Look at this. Potentially bringing it all across the south heavier rainfall plus that next storm system coming afterwards so i know this is going to cause some flooding as well but i'm sure this is going to make a lot of people happy to see all this rainfall maybe it'll go over towards florida in the south again maybe towards the carolinas and georgia so far all we know is is this it all depends how much it goes towards the east and major snow so you can see here with the euro from the first storm system bringing some snow i don't know how much of that is going to stick around with the warm temperatures and you can see what's coming across the great lakes towards the upper midwest next storm system coming in bringing colder air as well but look at that with all that precipitation bringing a heavy swath of snow look at the gfs Showing the first one, 
But showing that second one is really going to be the bigger of the snowstorms that's passing through. Now still showing it's about 40%. It may go up to 50. I think it'll stay at 40 for a little while because we're still in that suppression phase. We got to see what that trough is doing in the tropics and see exactly what's going on with this system. You can see how it did change though. So we had this one. It got a little bit further towards the west. And our latest update, it really started showing towards the west but this is where we're going to get that trough coming through pulling that precipitation out through the east what's left is going to be building over here in the caribbean still showing with the euro once you go five six days then it starts curving by jamaica and still shows it's going to go west towards the gulf of mexico what what it depends on is how much of it is left together from that trough when it gets pulled to the west so it still depends on whether this system is going to be forming east, center, or west of that trough. The more center and west it is, of course, it's going to hold more together. The more on the eastern side, the more it's going to get ripped apart and won't have enough time to form before it gets pulled to the west. And once again, you can see with the increments, as you go five, six days, that's where it starts turning over by Jamaica. Then it goes west from seven, eight days on. But once you go 10 days, this is where it can get that stall effect or just get pushed out through the west. There's a good chance that this could get picked up by the high pressure and pulled into the Pacific. So when we go by the latest model runs, you can see what's going on with the data. So as we get that trough coming in, according to the GFS, it pulls a good bit of that precipitation out to the east. You see that? And then what comes back is big and broad. Now, when these systems are big and broad, it takes a while and gives them a lot of time for them to tighten up and become anything. And in this one, it pulls it to the west. And look, it separates it again, bringing just a little piece to the west and tries to curve around the high pressure. But look how it keeps going to the west. But when you look for a pressure, you can look here and see that it's just a tropical depression is going in and out of chances for a tropical depression. Then it gets even weaker and just bringing all that moisture. And then maybe another one coming later. We're still having problems figuring out if this one's coming. But showing it does add up to a lot of heavy rainfall for the Caribbean. And then as it comes towards the Gulf, it brings a lot of surge towards the south bringing y'all a lot of precipitation. Show you the latest trend as well, real quick. Let me show you the ensembles. You can see with the Euro still showing that we could get multiple weak tropical depressions, still showing weak systems. I'm not showing hurricanes, I'm showing chances for tropical storms with this. And you can see the weakness, but you can see how it's showing that it's gonna go back to the west after that. And we're still seeing that figure S. We're still seeing that figure S like this of the path. So you can see how it goes that way, then it goes back. So when you look with the Euro, you can see the same thing. The trough is coming through, it separates it, and majority of it goes out through the east on the latest run with these two. These two are both trending together on this. So it's actually bringing some good news on this. So far, if it shows true, look how big and broad that system is as it goes to the west. So when it tries to form up, but then we get another upper level high that swings that into the Pacific. Showing it don't get much pressure on that neither. Look at this, won't even really get itself together. We're already at seven days now. Showing it still tries, but it just cannot hold itself together. Just too much gets ripped apart from that trough, but also agreeing we may have something in the middle of November. Now when we go by the Canadian, the Canadian shows that it don't pull away a lot of precipitation. It still holds itself together, and that's what gets carried to the west. See, it pulls it away, but it don't pull a majority. Tightens up and goes to the west. And actually shows one of the worst case scenarios because your high pressure is leaving. This will allow this to travel to the north. Then with that trough coming in, that will pull that back into that direction. But as of right now, that is on a standalone by itself. We're still on the pivot point of how much precipitation holds together from that trough. How much goes out through the east and how much stays together. And we're still six, seven days away from that. But you can see how it shows it's a stronger system, something coming towards Jamaica, and then the Western Caribbean, and maybe some more front and due systems. And showing in that case that it would be a lot of heavy precipitation, showing a well-organized system. So I said, okay, let me see if I can find another 
model <laughs> that can show us something in between what's going on with this latest trend and see what is out there. So this model is called Spire Weather and Climate Intelligence, showing that it does use low orbit satellites, everyone, and this helps provide more precise atmospheric measurements and weather predictions. So just like what we did with Euro AI, I'd like to put this through the test and see how true this model actually is because it's something new. And that model sees that it could form up right past that trough over here from Puerto Rico going towards the Bahamas and go through the west. You see that? Don't know what it does after that. This is just the run on this. And this is the latest run on this system. Now you can see on the previous run it showed almost the same thing a little bit turn of a curve so it is showing it could form up on the northern side and we're seeing both sides up still a possibility but we're seeing them both weak this model is the only one that's shown is going to be on the northern side and the canadian is showing on the southern side so still don't know it's seven days from knowing anything but i would like to add that on your nao when we get that trough the Canadian, which is this green, which is showing this big system forming in the Caribbean, is the only one that's not showing it as deep as the GFS and the Euro, which is trending, and both of those are showing something weak. But also agreeing that we have a lot of favorable environment for this first system possibly to form everyone, and we have something coming in the middle of the month still, seen both by GFS and the Euro. Now you can see this on the Euro, so the Euro is showing that that system probably will go further to the west and strengthen maybe into the Pacific, everybody. And that second system that GFS is seeing, Euro is showing this one could be a little bit further towards the east. And really we have this in our area where we could get some convection, some storms forming, but really don't have anything after that. So I will keep you updated, but Euro is still showing maybe later in November potentially our last storm of our hurricane season. So I hope this helps you understand not only what's coming today, but what is coming around the corner. So we have more storms coming, bringing more snowfall as well, and some, at least some heavy rainfall coming from this next transition into the tropics. That would be very much needed. No one wants a storm, but everyone wants this rainfall. So hopefully we do get that as well. Now, before I go, Hebrews 10, 22 through 20. Six, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Watch out for those storms this afternoon. Remember, Ryan Hall, y'all always support his live streams. He's always there keeping everyone safe for those live streams. And that's really what I support. I don't support everyone and I don't support everyone's videos, but I do support his live streams. So please go there. He will keep you safe through the night from these storms. That way you know what to expect without any of that hype. Above all things, all glory goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh, and I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Be safe today, everybody. I'll see you in the morning.